This six core CPU cost me $20. I put it into a PC I built for $1,360 in 2010 that I still use today. Will this new CPU extend the life of my PC for another three years? If you're like me, when you buy things, you buy them to last. Sometimes the upfront costs can hurt, but when you think of using something for three, five, seven, or even 10 years, then all of a sudden that upfront cost means very little. Now, computers are just the same. The upfront cost is commonly over 1,000 US dollars. Almost everyone has one. They can be used for anything that you want, and they last over so many years, they'll be with you through many different phases of your life, like from school to graduation, from job to job, and from city to city. So I built this PC in 2010. I still use it today, and it has officially lasted me several different periods of my life. It has an i7-930, no overclock. It has 24 gigabytes of RAM, upgraded from six, it has a GTX 970, upgraded from a GTX 460. It has some SSDs, including the original one that I built it with. And it has this Gigabyte X58 UD3R motherboard. Now this motherboard supports something called LGA1366, the socket which the i7-930 uses. Now, by all means in 2017, one of the first generations of i7 processors is going to bottleneck almost any system, especially if you're going to use it for games, video editing, sometimes photo editing, anything that's going to be CPU intensive is going to slow down because of this processor. But there's something special. Over the last few years, markets have been flooded with low-cost server processors that fit LGA1366. These are processors that, compared to today's newer tech, are slower and consume more power. But for my consumer purposes, it's a decent upgrade. Now, when it comes to bottlenecks in my PC, the main one is the processor. My graphics card is from 2015. 24 gigabytes of RAM is from 2015. The SATA 3 on this PC is questionable, but I could remedy that with a PCI Express SSD if I wanted to. But things like slower video rendering and audio popping while playing games and an inability to stream games other than simple 2D indie games point to a potential CPU bottleneck. 100% usage during these tasks and a seven-year-old part will definitely show you the problems. Now, one nice thing about this PC when I built it was that I used this Cooler Master V8 aftermarket cooler, which would have allowed me to overclock my original i7-930, but also allows me to upgrade the processor without getting a new cooler. It's much better than this Intel stock cooler that came with the original processor that I built with this PC. So I decided to go with the X5650, a six core, 12 thread, 2.66 gigahertz processor, which I got on Amazon for $20. Now on a side note, I wanna say that I changed the case. I went from the Cooler Master High Airflow 932 case, which I originally used for the system, and went to the smaller form factor Fantex case. This Fantex case is a little bit more modern looking, a little less like a giant ogre near my desk. It also will probably spew out a little less dust from less fans, and also has some padding for noise. Personally, I don't really care about the temperature of my PC so long as that it's stable. But noise and dust are deal breakers for me, and after seven years of this, I've just about had it, and so have my fibrosed lungs. Now, for building a PC or conducting an upgrade like this where you need to take the motherboard out, typically you'll want to test all the components before mounting the motherboard in a new case. But because I know that the original processor yields a stable system, and the fact that there's this hole in the case means that I can change the cooler without needing to unmount the motherboard. So after switching everything and putting all the essentials in, all with the new processor, I came across this. I am so scared that this thing's not gonna post. I'm, I, I don't even think it's gonna turn on. Three, two, one.
All right, this has been a, a nice exercise in failure. But after going into the BIOS and lowering voltages and setting things to auto, I came out with this. It's the last time I'm gonna try this. Come on. So for a $20 upgrade on the CPU, I had a very good increase in performance all across the board on all benchmarks. But benchmarks don't make sense when comparing the same computer to itself. It's nice to compare one system to another, but I've used this computer every day for seven years. That's 2,500 days every day where I've used this computer. So I know where it chokes up. I know where there's going to be problems. I'm able to anticipate when a certain project or when I press something that the computer will slow down. And the good news is it doesn't choke through these things. Video editing is a little snappier. Rendering, even though I've always had CUDA on, is a little faster. Games run a little bit smoother and recording through OBS, yes, I've always had NV Ink on, is much faster. So how does this tie into anything? Who cares about the processor that's in my computer? Well. Simple upgradability and extensibility like this are a hallmark feature of personal computing. I don't know too many other areas where you can, through a standard interface, go back years later and make something faster and easier to use. The notion that you buy something with having in mind that you can make it faster years later is something that doesn't exist in most other industries. You don't buy medicine and have in mind that you can upgrade it later to have it cure another disease. In my opinion, the prevalence of upgrading features over standard interfaces had a two-way influence on software development. In the programming world, the predominant paradigm right now is that of object-oriented design. It's in the most popular languages like Java, C++, C Sharp. You see, in object-oriented design, you have something called a base class. We can illustrate this with life. A defining feature of life is the usage of water, as well as the usage of the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus as physical building blocks. We can organize all of these features into a base class that we'll name living object. Now, nothing is solely that of living object. But let's say the simplest form that we can count is this bacteria, which uses water and is made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Some bacteria have their own unique features, like this tail called a flagellum, or they also have unique shapes. These features allow bacteria to exist as a class that inherits from living object. It has all the features of living object, but also its own features. So let's take a second example that we're a little bit more familiar with. Let's take mammals. Mammals also use water and are made of five elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. So they qualify as a living object. Now, all mammals have three things in common. They'll all have a mother who produces milk, they'll all have hair, and they'll all have a middle bone in their ear. So we can qualify mammal as a class that inherits from living object. Now the final example. As humans, we qualify as a mammal, which means that we're guaranteed to have milk-producing mothers, we're guaranteed to have hair, and we're guaranteed to have middle ear bones. But as mammals, we are also living object in that we use water, and we are also made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. So humans are on the bottom of this class hierarchy, but are guaranteed to have the features of mammal and guaranteed to have the features of living object, classes that exist upstream. All humans are living objects, but not all living objects are human. This guarantee in the object hierarchy is the most important feature of object-oriented design. In another example of natural elements, each one is guaranteed to have protons, neutrons, and electrons. And in the case of computers, the computers that we use as consumers are guaranteed to have CPUs, are guaranteed to have random access memory, and are guaranteed to have localized storage in some capacity. Something like a PCI Express slot is guaranteed to provide power and specific data lanes. Through these guarantees granted through object-oriented design, 
We're able to give extensibility and modularity in the physical world in our technology, as well as the software that powers that technology. The notion of organization through a hierarchy of object containers that guarantees features upstream dictates our technology right now in the 21st century. It's a defining feature of our time, and it's through this simple idea of organization that we're able to do things like upgrade a simple CPU, because the LGA 1366 socket is guaranteed to implement features that the X5650 will utilize. So, will this CPU upgrade make my computer last three more years for a whopping 10 years of use? The short answer is no, it's not going to. I'll give you a quick example. Three years ago was 2014. Around that time, 4K was just emerging. It was just starting to become a thing. Now, three years later, 4K is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It's even on phone cameras. I have no idea what's gonna be here in the next three years, but I can guarantee you this, it's not going to be on this PC. But even then, has 4K become the new standard yet? Well, maybe not. But it's inevitable, it's going to be here, and when it is, it's going to be very soon. But I know somebody's going to comment below and say that they're watching in 240p. And that's where the long answer comes in. If all I was gonna do was use this computer to browse the internet and watch videos, then yes, this computer will last me into the 2020s. It'll last me longer than just three years. But this upgrade will last me a little bit longer. It might squeeze out an extra year maybe 18 months out of this computer. But think about this. If I end up using this computer for eight or even nine years total, that will be at least 10% of my entire lifespan. No matter what, even in my last days, fulfilling my guarantee of being living object, I will never forget the service that this PC has provided me and all the things that I've been able to create with it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great week, and I'll see you next week.